Yesterday I was trying to figure out how many houses are on my street and how many of those houses have pets in them. So I asked my friend John to go figure it out. I figured he'd just walk down the street, count the houses, ask people if they have pets, and just bring me a tally. But here's what he brought back. He told me 14 houses have cats, 19 have dogs, 6 have both, and 5 have neither cats nor dogs, and they don't have any other pets. So I asked John, well, how does this help me? I just, you know, I figured you're just going to bring me two numbers. And he said, well, you're the math guy. You figure it out. So I am the math guy, so I do have to figure this out. I can't just add up all the numbers because, well, these people are counted here and here, so I can't just add up all the numbers. So what I did instead, I started with a diagram. First I drew a big box, and you know, this would be my street, and all the houses on my street, I'm going to put them in the box. And I'm going to make one circle for the cats. And all the houses with cats, they go in this circle. I'm going to make another circle for dogs. And all the houses with dogs, they go in this circle. So the houses with both go in here, and the houses with neither, well, they don't go in either circle. So we can go ahead and stick them in out here. And notice we can't right away figure out what goes here. We know that there are 14 total in the cat circle, but we aren't told how many are out here, cats and no dogs. But we do know that if we work from the inside out, we know there are six that, are, that both have cats and dogs. So we can go ahead and stick six in the middle. Once we have that six, now we can figure out what goes out here. We know there are 14 total in the cat circle. We subtract six to see that there are eight that are outside the overlap region. So there are just eight houses. There's full cats, no dogs. Similarly, we have 19 houses with dogs. Six of them also have cats. Have to keep them separate. And that leaves 19 minus six, 13 houses. These are the real dog people. They only have dogs, no cats allowed. So now every house on my street is in this box, and they're all counted exactly once. So now I can figure out how many have pets. 8 plus 6 plus 13, that gives me 27 houses with pets. And then I tack on the 5 that don't have any pets at all, and that gives me a total of 32 houses. So I thought I was pretty clever coming up with this diagram. You know, no one could be as clever as me. I, I must be the first person ever to figure this out. But then John came back and looked at it and said, hey, that's a nice Venn diagram. And sure enough, I wasn't the first to think of this. This is indeed called a Venn diagram. And then he said, not, not only did he say I wasn't the first to figure this out, but he said that he had a faster way to figure this 27 out. He just uses a simple subtraction. So I asked him to show it to me, and he said, watch this. 14 houses with cats. I'm going to add on the 19 houses with dogs. And I said, ha! I got you, John. That, that, you messed up there because you're counting the people who have both cats and dogs. You're counting them twice. And you can't count them twice. You, only, you can only count them once. And he said, that's the point. I've counted them twice. I know there are six of them, so I have to subtract them once. So the houses that have cats and dogs, I add them twice. Once here, once here, and then I subtract them once. That means I've only counted them once. So they're 14 plus 19 minus 6, and that's 27 total houses with pets. And sure enough, that's the same number I got. You see, all he did here was use subtraction to correct for overcounting. He counts something twice, he has to subtract it once so that he's counting it once and only once. And we're particularly relieved to see that we get the same answer. And when you do the same problem two different ways and you get the same answer, you can be pretty confident you're right. And this is a very good way to check your work in a counting problem. Now, I was pretty impressed with with John's slick little subtraction method here. So I decided I'd ask him a harder problem. And I'd, I'd first solve it with a Venn diagram and then challenge him to use his clever little subtraction method to solve it. And what I told him was, I've got 42 friends. 42 friends. And of these 42 friends, 23 no math. And also of my 42 friends, 21 of them are very good looking, dashingly handsome people. Meanwhile, 18 of my friends, well, unfortunately, they don't know math. And they're not, they're not very good looking because, well, let's be honest. How good looking can you be if you don't know math? And here's the question. I wanted to figure out how many of my dashingly handsome friends also know math? 
And first, I, I did the problem with a Venn diagram. I, I decided I'd just draw, draw a box first. And I'm going to take all my friends, stick them in the box, because who doesn't like putting their friends in a box? And then I made a circle for my math friends. And then I made another circle for my good-looking friends. And I know that I can take my 18 friends who are not so good-looking and don't know math. They don't go in either circle, so they're on the outside looking in. They're out here. And then I take my 23 math friends and do. It's not so clear what I'm supposed to do with them because I don't know how many are here. Don't know how many are here. I just know that there are 23 total. So, well, just so I can keep going, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put a variable here. I'm going to, I'm going to say there are x. X of my friends no math and are very good looking. Because once I do that, then I can fill in these other two areas. And I can keep going with the problem. X are both. There are 23 total who know math. And that leaves me 23 minus X who, who know math but aren't so good looking. And similarly, I have 21 who are very good looking. X of them know math. And that leaves 21 minus X people who, despite not knowing math, are still pretty good looking. Now, these people are pretty rare. So, now I want to find x, but I'm stuck again. And when I get stuck with a problem, what I like to do is I like to look back at the information I was given and focus on the information that I haven't used yet. And I haven't used the fact that I have 42 friends here. So I take that and I look back at my diagram and I say, hey, wait a second, all my friends are in the box. I put all my friends in the box. So if I add up all these expressions, I should get all of my friends. So if I add these all up, I should get 42. So let's add them up. Start with the 18, then my 23 minus x, then the x in the overlap, and then the 21 minus x, rare people who are good looking despite not knowing math. And each of my friends falls into one of these four categories. So when I add them all up, I should get 42. And now I have an equation I can solve. I can find x. So first we simplify over here. 18 plus 23 is 41, plus 21, that gives us 62. Minus x, plus x, they cancel. With one more minus x here, minus x. And that's got to equal 42. And now it's clear, x is 20. So 20 of my 21 handsome friends also know math. Almost all of my good-looking friends know math. But that's not a coincidence. So I showed this to John, and he looked at it and he said, yeah, that's nice. That's a nice pretty Venn diagram. And then he erased it. And I was like, wait a second. It took a lot of time to make that diagram. And he said, well, here comes the subtraction method again. I'm going to take your 23 math friends and add them to your 21 good-looking friends. And this counts all your friends who know math and are good-looking twice. And if you count them twice, you have to subtract once, because you only want to count them once. So it subtracts the x who know math and are good-looking. Then you add in the 18 who are neither. And this counts all of your friends. Now, all your friends who only know math are counted here. The ones who are only handsome are counted here. The ones who are neither are here. And the ones who are both are added once, then added a second time, then subtracted once. So they're counted once too. Each friend is counted once and only once, and that's the whole goal in the counting problem. So when I add them all up, we should get 42. And sure enough, when you simplify this, 23 plus 21 is 44 plus 18. That's 62 minus x. And now we have the same equation as we had before. And once again, We've done the same problem two different ways, and we've gotten the same answer, so we can be very confident we're right. And particularly, we learned something new here with John's method, this correcting for overcounting with subtraction. And the key here, again, is that we're counting everything once and only once. And if you count everything once and only once, then you'll get the right count.